Hey everybody, Kyle here with Spicer Designs. This is gonna take a while. This thing holds 17,000 gallons of water. Welcome back to the channel. Well, I'm sure you put two and two together. Today's video, we are going to be working on the Langmuir Crossfire Pro CNC plasma table. Like always, I will have links and a discount code down in the description. That's the only time I'm going to say that, so check it out. And if you are interested in this table, I have all kinds of other videos giving you all the information that you need on the table, all of its requirements, the software, all that good stuff. Also, check that out. This craftsman stool is really holding up well. Well, believe it or not, I'm making another trip to Pennsylvania to see Adam from Hometown Acres. He's such a needy bastard, I just can't stand it. Just kidding, I like Adam. He's okay, even though his beer choice is questionable. I'm going to be heading that way to do some electrical work for him. You'll see that in an upcoming video on his channel. I'll make sure that I leave a community post or something for that. And after that, because that's just not enough, we're gonna be starting another project over there working on a lean-to. And I had a suggestion on this lean-to, it's gonna be all rough sawn lumber, to build some custom gussets for some of the joints on the front of the lean-to building. Since I get a lot of questions in the comments and some emails, uh, people asking what kind of things that they can make with these CNC plasma tables that they could sell, make some money. Uh, I try to throw out some different ideas here and there on the channel, but this one is uh, definitely a niche that could work out really well for you. Get hooked up with a contractor that builds barns and custom timber frame buildings and might be able to start building some gussets for them. Now, I don't know what all the rules and requirements are on something like a gusset. It does have some structural integrity to it. So I'd have to imagine that there's some kind of a quality control process or a testing process. It may even be required to be made out of a certain material or thickness. But in this situation, it's just gonna be for a small little lean-to. It really doesn't even have to have the gussets. It's more decorative and for aesthetics. So I think we'll be okay in this particular situation. I think I explained that pretty well. So we're gonna jump on the computer, get on Fusion 360, and I'm gonna design these gussets from scratch so that you can see the entire process and how I'm going to do it. I'll try to make this as interesting as I can. I know this can tend to be a little bit boring. If you're not all that interested in the software part of this, you can go ahead and skip to that time right there and it'll scoot you right on past this and get on to the fabricating part of it and the Pennsylvania trip. Fusion 360, up to date, hell yeah. All right, here we are on our blank screen. Where's my grid at? We're gonna go to our top view, and we are going to create a new sketch on the X and Y plane. You wanna be orientated on the top with the Z axis coming right at your face. Hopefully you know what I'm talking about. Now Adam needs three different gusset plates. Like I said, they're just decorative. There's going to be three posts on the front of this lean-to. So on the left post, we're gonna have a right angle bracket coming in and the exact opposite on the right post, and then in the middle post, it's going to be a T-bracket. Pretty simple, we're gonna to try to add a couple little things to make it look floofy, whatever you wanna call it. I'm gonna to go to a center rectangle, and I'm going to make this thing nine inches tall by 17 and a half inches. Now, we're going to do another rectangle, and this one is going to be six and a half inches tall by five and a half inches tall. It doesn't line up. So I'm going to add a construction line right here, escape, hit X, turn it into a construction line, and then I am going to lock that in place using the lock tool, fix, unfix tool, sorry. You can see that that turned that green. That means that that line will not move, and then now I'm going to hit the symmetry tool and I'm gonna click both sides of this and then use that center line as a reference and it should shift this whole thing over to center it. Bingo. So there is our T. We've got nine inches tall for the header and we've got five and a half inches wide for the column. Six to six and a half inches Ooh. of overhang onto the meat so we could add some holes. And I can come in here and grab my trim tool and we'll have to double tap that one because there's actually two overlapped lines right here. Now we have our nice open T. So the first thing we're gonna do is throw some holes in this. Then we can kind of add the decorative features to it afterwards. The holes are gonna be important as far as the placement. So right here down the middle, we can just picture this. Actually, I'm going to put my 
my reference line back in here because I can use that symmetry tool again to make sure that everything is symmetric. So picture a seam right here down the middle where the two headers are going to join and then they're going to be sitting on top of that column underneath. And that column is gonna be notched to accept those two headers. So we're gonna add a couple more reference lines here. Now I'm gonna zoom in, I'm gonna hit D. That'll give us the dimension tool. We're gonna to click on these two lines and that is going to be 1.5 inches. Actually, you know what, F that. I changed my mind. So nine inches tall, we're gonna have two reference lines going through there for two rows of bolts. I know it's kind of confusing right now, but you'll see here in a minute, and I'm gonna add a little something else to that center section. So we're gonna zoom in here, hit D, which gives us the dimension tool. We'll click on these two lines so we can determine our spacing, and we're gonna make these two inches off of the top and two inches off the bottom. And that leaves us with five inches in between. When I throw those reference lines in there, I just throw them in wherever I want, then I use that dimension tool, and then that will fix the location where it's permanently going to be. There's no sense of trying to get it all lined up perfectly as you're making that line. Now that we have all of our reference lines in place, we're gonna go ahead and add all of our holes using the center circle tool. This is gonna be pretty easy, then we can go through and erase all of those reference lines. Now, I would imagine that he's probably gonna use a 3 8 lag bolt on these. He could use a half inch lag bolt. All right, center circle. We're just gonna hit all of our crosshairs here. Point 0.365. I'm sure there's a better way to do this too, but all right, this one we're gonna do one in the center. Does that all look right? Yeah, that looks right. All right, we got all of our holes in there. We can go ahead and delete those reference lines. When you delete the reference lines, it's better to use your actual delete button. If you try to use the trim tool, it will only delete the section until it intersects another line and it just takes way longer where if you just highlight that line and hit delete, it takes the whole line out. All right, there it is. There is our gusset. Oh, that one's f***ed up. What happened there? It's okay. That is okay. I messed up right here. We're gonna go ahead and delete that one. We'll use the circle tool, we'll kind of lock in on this one, and lock in on this one, and it should intersect both of them. There we go. Point three, six, five. All right, back in action. Now I want to do something a little bit decorative to the corners, and then I left that space open all the way across the middle. We're going to see if we could fit hometown acres in there. Bring these lines in that way. When we text on the path, it will center it perfectly on that plate. All right, hometown acres. Now we'll hit the center, and we're going to select, I believe he uses old scotch. This is font, I think I still have it in here. And we're going to try to just keep bumping this up. Hopefully, oh, that doesn't fit. We're just gonna eye this thing, it's not really that big of a deal. It's just for Adam. And we're gonna put those little center notches right on the center line of this upper section of the bracket. So that looks good right there. Now I'm going to right click on this and hit explode text. And now we have actual vector lines for that font, which I did make a separate video on this about finding custom fonts. I explain all that in that video if you want more information on different fonts and how to turn them into a vector file. I'll have to go back on some of those letters and add little bridges in there. I'll do that off camera. I just wanna go ahead and notch some of these corners so they look somewhat decorative. We'll go with a two and a half inch radius. Well, I know that looks stupid, but we're going to trim out these sections right here. Yeah. Not crazy about it, but it's not gonna be at my house, so. Okay. okay, so that is pretty much the design part of this. I'm going to add a couple of bridges in there. I'll turn that sketch into a body, which helps me in the manufacture process where I actually create a cut path. And again, I have videos where I go over all that stuff. I will leave links for those videos down in the description if that's the information that you're looking for. Otherwise, I'm going to work on the two other right angle brackets for the right and left post. Then we can get some steel on this plasma table and get these things cut and painted and get ready to head to Pennsylvania. Doing it again. Here we go. I swear it's one cluster f after another. 
I gotta figure out a better way to do all this. I do have a material cart in mind that I wanna build, custom material cart. So stay tuned for that because I can't stand this any longer. You know, everything is temporary in the shop right now. Just enough so I could function. I think I got some 12 gauge here. Hopefully I don't have to grab a full sheet. That would suck. Oh yeah, baby. Oh, I think I just blew out an O-ring. Yeah, I did. I did blow out an O-ring. Yeah. Yeah, that's 12 gauge. Oh yeah, that's good enough. 18 and 10. Let's check those dimensions. Oh, 37 inches. Damn it. 15, okay, so we're good there. All right, okay, I'm gonna. I'm gonna change some things around. All right, we got our zero set. This thing should fit perfectly on the spare piece of steel that I had. All that's left to do is to cue the music. There we go. Let it rip. Damn it. I can't see with these on. This is freaking awesome. Where else can you make like this, you know? Freaking awesome. Oh yeah, so clean. There is the T gusset, 12 gauge steel. I mean, that's almost eighth inch. That's pretty strong, I guess. And we've got our right hand and left hand brackets, similar style to the center bracket. All right, I'll get these on the fab table. We'll take another look at them. Hopefully I don't trip. Oh. Didn't fall. These look freaking awesome. A little bit of paint on them. All right, here are the brackets. I'll orientate them in the way that they'll be mounted. So we'll have the one column coming up here with the header going across. This is where they'll mate up. <coughs> Center column, the right column. I think that you can understand what we're doing here. Probably kind of hard to see actually on this table but turned out pretty damn good. I'd say that these are pretty beefy, cut some really nice clean holes. I just put new consumables on the machine torch there, so it's cutting <laughs> super crisp. This is just another thing that you can make with these machines, machine, where you can make some money. Find yourself a barn builder or whatever, make sure uh, you know it's all kosher as far as safety and being that they're structural. You know, I don't know what all the requirements are on that, like I said at the beginning of the video, but even if it's just decorative, there's some money to be made here, so another idea for you. Anyways, I'm gonna get these things cleaned up. Uh, the good thing is I don't have any welding to do on them. I'm gonna get some primer on them, and I have a textured paint that I'm gonna use. Hopefully it's a little bit more beefy, because I love beefy. I'll go ahead and spare you all the footage of me painting these things. For now, it's off to Pennsylvania. Again, two months later, eight hours, alone, scared. Lots of death fluid, lots of oil. That's gonna add a little extra expense to the trip, Adam. You to cover that one. You know, I'm 6'5", so that's not a problem for me. Giddy up. All right, I'm about 300 miles into this 500 mile trip. I'm not even that far. Actually, I'm about 250 miles in to a 500 mile trip, so you do the math. Five minus two divided by three. So I'm like halfway through. Just stopped at a rest stop. I'm not driving right now. The janitor got kind of lippy with me, so I took in the urinal. So let's get back on the road. I'll get you some cool shots heading into Pennsylvania. You know, the fall colors are 
fading, but they're still there, so maybe there's some good scenery. Either way, who gives a sh Are you into working too? Yep. All right, Adam. Here is the finished product you ordered. Custom gusset work, right? Yep. There's one. Pretty basic. The other one's the same. There's the showpiece. What do you think? That looks awesome. Yeah. Matches our logo perfectly. That's going to look nice on the building. Yeah. Definitely give it a unique look for oh, yeah. sure. A little feng shui. Yeah. So you said these are ready to mount. Where? I don't see the building anywhere. I I kind of figured, you know, like some... Is that the building? Some male bonding. Like we'd <laughs> put it up together, right? You got to be <laughs> me. I should have known when I saw Doug here. That was that was a red flag. We're ready to go. Oh, boy. Well, I brought tools, so... All right, then. Let's get after it. Can I that? Yeah. Yeah, buddy. Oh, hell, Adam could get more than half of that. Well, he's six foot five. Time to blow out the old O ring. All right, well, it's been four weeks since I've seen my family, but uh, that doesn't matter because we got Adam's building pretty much framed up. So I could finally put the gussets on that I came here to do. You can see they're still dilly-dallying around up there. <laughs> Knuckleheads. And if you want to see this whole barn build, go ahead and check out Hometown Acres. I'll leave a link for his channel down in the description. A couple of projects. I spent some time over here help. Damn it! I worked on a couple projects here with Adam, so we'll have a couple videos where I'm over here working on his channel. I'll leave the link for those videos down in the description as well. I like to fall down on the videos. Do you think maybe you could fall off the scaffold? Can I, I'll give you a damn it. Yeah. All right. But just get on the higher one, because you're six foot five, you know. Yeah, I don't hit from the ladies' tees. <laughs> This would be good. Yeah. No touching. Oh, this is tickling my ears. All right, that's going to wrap this one up. Overall, those gusset brackets turned out pretty nice. They actually look pretty f cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they look awesome. If any of you guys want to order custom gusset brackets from Kyle, he will come and build the building for you as well, free of charge. <laughs> oh, damn it. <laughs> you know, I don't know why you fall down in all your videos. It's stupid, it's immature. What a clown. There's no point to it. I mean, it's... Yeah. So if you want to see the rest of this build, check out Adam's channel, like I said before. I will leave a link for his channel in the description. And I want to give a huge thanks to Autumn and Doug over at One Eye Customs for letting me stay in their basement. It was a little weird when Doug crawled in bed, but it was still a very nice day. So if you like this video, hit that thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Leave yes, it in the if video. If you want to see any more collaborations with Hometown Acres, don't hold your breath. I'm never coming to Pennsylvania again. <laughs> I... I you could have said no. I guess I could have. You're the one that said yeah. We've just become such good friends. You drove eight hours to come build this. I know, I think it does look pretty sweet. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Lana? We built that entire building just so we could put those gussets on it. It's likely gonna fall down in the first 
10 to 15 mile an hour wind you get. Yeah. So I wouldn't I wouldn't hang out anywhere near this thing. The bad thing is though, is you gotta park your car in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna pull the tractor in the garage and keep your car out here. <laughs> Do not check out one on customs channel. I don't like Doug anymore. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to make sure we is had Is that the one Autumn service. lost? Is that the one that Autumn lost? Yes. Dick. Still don't know what I'm talking about. I didn't listen to anything you just said. Okay. All I heard was butt and deeper. <laughs> I need a beer cooler out here. If you notice the screen is blank, it's because I don't know how to work that thing. Cameras have way too many settings. I'm getting arthritis. What the f am I doing right now?